from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louie B. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Thursday, December the 2nd, 2021. Just a few short days away from the Eastern Final, where the Hamilton Tiger Cats are set to travel to BMO Field to take on. The Toronto Argonauts cannot wait for that one. Been circled on the calendar, well, since last week in the Eastern Semifinal when we beat Montreal to make it to that game. A big show coming up here. We're going to check in with Coach Sal for some Thursday salutations. We'll hear from Coach Orlando Steinauer. We'll hear from Darius Sirocco and Jovan Santos Knox. Uh, Before we get into all that, though, want to let you know that Arkells, who are set to headline the Twisted Tea Grey Cup Halftime Show have announced a special guest as the Lumineers are set to perform alongside Arkells at the Grey Cup Halftime Show. So that is very exciting. Uh, I've been a big Lumineers fan for a few years, so it'll be exciting to see them in Hamilton at the Grey Cup. And of course, the only way you can uh, watch it is on TSN or be there in person. You can go to tightcats.ca slash great cup or ticketmaster.ca slash great cup for tickets. All right, we're here on the Tie Cats Audio Network. Make sure to be listening all next week throughout Great Cup Festival as we'll be broadcasting at select events throughout Great Cup Week, whether it's the Western Social Hall or the Eastern Social Hall or the Great Cup Arrival. So lots going on, including lots of prizes. We partner with our friends at Swoop Airlines. To give away a pair of passes anywhere Swoop flies. So that's pretty exciting. You're going to want to be listening to the Ticats Audio Network throughout the week next week for your chance to win that. Plus great cup tickets. So lots going on here at the Ticats Audio Network. Including today, brand new episode of Speaking with the Enemy. Brand new episode of Task in Twos. Tomorrow, brand new episode of Ticats This Week. So keep it locked here. And by the way, I told you this. Uh, just for you guys, because I care so much. On Saturday, bonus special edition of Tie Cats Today. I'll run through the depth chart and bring you everything from the pre-game press conference that's being held at BMO Field. So lots to get to throughout the rest of the week. All right, today's practice was closed to the public. I was not allowed inside the building. And I know what you're saying. You are not public. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but respecting coach and and the rules that were in place that said no media was a closed practice I did not attend but I will let you know and you'll hear coach say this uh, Braylon Addison did not practice today he was limited yesterday and just running through yesterday's injury report uh, because it's released at 5 p.m the show comes out at 4 uh, Malik Carney was a, a full participant Mason Bennett did not practice he's dealing with an eye injury uh, Mike Daly was limited. Siante Evans was limited. That's kind of encouraging. Uh, West Hills, Malik Irons, they were both healthy scratches. They were full participants. Lorenzo Malden, the fourth, did not practice. Jordan Murray, dealing with head injury, he was limited. Uh, and David Watford and Kyle Wilson, who, again, were both healthy scratches, were full participants. So that's the Ticats injury report from yesterday. We'll have to wait uh, to see what went down at practice today because, again, it was closed to media but as mentioned coach does touch on the status of Braylon Addison as we caught up with him after practice and uh, I actually asked him since uh, since we weren't there if he could tell me what happened at practice here's what he had to say nope <laughs> no, I'm just kidding no we uh yeah no I thought I thought it was good it was super windy we got to battle some elements uh and that sort of thing so you know I was pleased with it. I thought it was pretty crisp well, obviously the surface is different, so I'd be lying if I said it's not a difference. But you know, I know this guaranteed to be the same for both teams, so we'll be ready to roll. Well, I mean that's going to be up to Boris. Like we can't control how he kicks, right? Our our main job as, on on any return team is to get the ball to the offense, period, and then second of all, in the best field position possible. So how he's kicking the ball is how he's kicking the ball when he's on his game, he's definitely a weapon, right? He's whether they're scoring, then he's kicking the ball off deep, and you know he's proven to to be a more than adequate punter. <clears throat> well, I think they've hit their stride. Meaning, I think you know they were figuring out what kind of football team they were early. That's just my own assessment. Uh, be it the quarterback position, uh, how they were going to attack teams with a two running back set. Uh, how their blocking schemes up up front have changed quite a bit. 
And so I think they've settled in a on a quarterback. And I think, uh, you know, Ryan has done a great job of settling in on what they can do. I think that their, their defense and special teams has done a great job. And so they've just found a way to win. And obviously because they have the buy and will be playing at their home field. Yeah, I don't, we don't even really go there, Dan. I mean, it's a fair question. Uh, Braylon actually did not practice today. He did. So uh, again, I'm not going to rule him out because we know what his uh, rehab process has been up to this point. Um, we're going to, whoever's out there, we're going to be very confident that, that we could win, whether it's with Braylon or without him. Yeah, and you do have the luxury of time. Like you still got a few more days, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't even think our roster was fully set yeah. last week until the last minute also, but that was due to injuries and, and if we could go or not. So I don't anticipate it being that long this week, but uh, you never know. That is the head coach of the Hamilton Targets, Orlando Steiner, as he spoke after a close to the media practice today. All right, one of the encouraging signs, one of the many encouraging signs we saw in Sunday's win over Montreal was the fact that center Darius Sirocco was able to start and finish the game. The last few times we had seen him start, uh, he had been unable to finish. So it was great to see him finish a full game. Encouraging sign. You know, he had been their starting center since uh, week one, since you know training camp. Uh, and it was a really good sign to see him back there finish the game. Uh, and we caught up with him after practice today and talked about just how excited he was to, uh, to get through a, a full game without any issues. Oh, it was awesome. It was great being back out there with the guys. Like you said, I tried a few times and just couldn't finish it out. But yeah, it, it felt good, like just being out there for the full game and getting to be out there with the boys and get a big win. Oh, it's huge. Like everybody, like you said, there's been a lot of guys in there and everybody's been in there working and developing. And it, it's just about sharing information and getting each other better this week. So but we're all like working together and just sharing the information that everybody's learned from playing the games and just doing what we can to get the best five out there and play our best game. Oh, Burger's amazing. Like from start, like when I first got here, he was more than willing to take me under his wing and help me out and just watching him work day in and day out. It, it, it's clear why he is as talented as he is. His work ethic, both in the weight room and in the film room is just incredible. So like, it, it's something that I try and learn from. I try and take bits and pieces here and there, pick his brain and just try and add to my game. And like, like you said, he's an amazing player. So it, it, I'm very lucky to have him. Um, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, I'm not big on putting percentages. I don't think anybody at this time of year could put a percentage on how healthy they are anyway. I, I'm just ready to go and do what I can for the team. Honestly, to me, it's just an opportunity to go out there and get a win. It okay. doesn't matter who we're lining up against. We're going to prepare the same. We're going to want to go out there and beat them just as badly. Um, it, it really doesn't change a whole lot. We're just going out there to try and win. And get to the Grey Cup, no matter Absolutely. who's in your way, right? Yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who's lining up against us. We just got to go out there and beat them. That is Darius Sirocco as he spoke after practice and. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's uh, it's easy to forget. By the way, I had a really a lot of nice things to say there about uh, Revenberg. Uh, but sometimes it's easy to forget that Darius Sirocco is only in his third CFL season. And that's probably because in his rookie year, he started or he played in all 18 games. Uh, but it, it's sometimes, you know, when you hear him talk and you hear him talk about the team, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's sometimes easy to forget. He's 25 years old. I uh, spoke like a true vet uh, and definitely a cornerstone of this team, I would think, for years to come. Uh, Jovan Santos Knox was actually brand new to the Thai Cats this season, but he has embraced being a Thai Cat uh, quicker, better than, uh, than a lot of guys uh, I've seen come through here in the last few years. Uh, he is all in, and I guess it doesn't help when you're playing, or I guess it does help, excuse me, helps a lot uh, when you're playing alongside Simone Lawrence. It's easy to buy into being a Thai Cat. Uh, when you're going to the linebacker meetings with with Sim. Uh, but Joe Van Santos Knox had a chance to catch up with him and uh, asked him about, you know, just the idea that it's the Argos, it's the Tie Cats, it's one of the best rivalries in sports, and it's for a spot in the Great Cup on the line. And I asked how much he's he's kind of buying into that. Here's what he had to say. 
Nah, this is, uh, you know, you told us this, uh, you know, in the beginning of the season, I think all our fans would be excited for it. Um, I think everyone would be excited, you know, um, if they knew that we were playing uh, the Argos in the in the Eastern Con- Conference Finals. So, um, you know, just excited that it's against our rival. So um, ready, ready, ready for this uh, challenge. Um, they're just an efficient offense. You know, they stay on the on the uh, on the on the field. They they convert on second downs, and uh, you know we just got to limit that. We got to get off the field. We got to get them to some second and long uh, situations, and because um, they're really good at just staying on the field and uh, eating up time of possession. So we got to limit that. Uh, I just think locked in. Locked in is the best word to use. Um, you know, we're not changing what we've been doing. No one's up, not too high, not too low. Everyone's just. Focus, doing what we did to get here, um, you know, continue what we've been doing, preaching all year. What Coach O's been instilling since training camp. So it's really no, no, uh, um, no, no one faltering, no one changing up their emotions. We're just we're just locked in from across the board. Uh, he's a he's a great quarterback. Uh, you know, he get he puts the ball where it needs to go. He's a, a good point. We, you know, we, we put it like this. He's a great point guard. He gets the ball to the guys that need that 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 they need to make the plays, and they you know gives it to them in the right spot. So with uh, Beto, the amount of weapons he has, we know that um you know he wants to get the distribute the ball evenly to to his to his uh to his to his playmakers. So um he's a really good quarterback, and you know we're up for the challenge. That is Jovan Santos Knox as uh, we were able to catch up with him after practice today. And remember, you can always catch full scrums over at tycats.ca. Right on the main page there, you can uh, hear full comments from uh, who we heard from today. So that would be Jovan Santos Knox and Terry Sirocco, Coach O, and Tim White. We had a chance to catch up with Tim White. So you can go to tycats.ca or while you're there, go to listen.tycats.ca. That's where you can find all of our great Ticats Audio Network shows. All right, very pleased now to be joined for some Thursday salutations. It's Coach Sal, John Salavantis. And uh, Coach Sal, let's get right into it because it's uh, safe to say, you know, as the defense played well, but the offense played well, excuse me, but it was the defense that, won the Ticats uh, that game on Sunday. Yeah, there's no question about that. You know, the Cats played to their strength, and that was that uh, Masoli's not going to turn the ball over. He's going to be very careful with the football, and the defense is going to give him opportunities. I don't know. I think there were like four or five sacks in the game. That was an interception in the game. You know, the, those are things that turn the tide when you're playing in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, the, stat, the stats speak for themselves. The, the six sacks, the five turnovers to just one uh, for the Ticats allowing. Um, I mean, defensively, they played well. Offensively, were you concerned by the lack of production? Or what do you make of just kind of uh, the, the, the spurts of offense that, that, that didn't seem to be going? Well, the consistency wasn't there. You know, and, and when you're trying to run things like jet sweeps on a wet field, where the footing is not good, it's very difficult for that player to plant that foot and turn up field. We saw that in the game. Uh, I did think that the offensive line played better, but I'm still concerned now. Sirocco got through the whole game, which he has not done uh, in the past few. So, you know, that being said, we were actually playing a man short because we had an American that was in there as a backup. So, you know, all in all, I, I think the whole situation being what it was, they had to win the game. There's no question about that. They did what they had to do to win the game, and, and therefore, you know, they move on and, and go into Toronto uh, for this weekend. Uh, we, we talked about the defense, but w- was there something specifically that kind of impressed you the most in, in a performance like the Ticats had on, uh, on Sunday? I, I really think that the pressure from the front was exceptional. Uh, there was no question about that. Uh, the fact that they had to move uh, uh, a delicate uh, into Evan's spot, uh, actually into the wide side uh, field side co- uh, halfback, uh, and play uh, Kazantis in the uh, in the middle, and yet they were able to accomplish that. I, I think this week they better get an extra D back if Evans and or someone else is a bit hurt. They've got Stribling on the practice roster. They could bring him on uh, in that place. I don't think you want to get caught short against Toronto uh, in your defensive backfield. 
Yeah, Siante Evans was limited at practice. Mike Daly was limited at practice as well, and uh, that was yesterday. Today is a closed practice, so we don't know what's going on uh, down there. Uh, offensively, back to offense. You mentioned the offensive line. Darius Sirocco is back. But Don Jackson, you know, I, I think people were expecting maybe a bigger game for Don Jackson. He did have that touchdown. Uh, but, but how do you see him still continuing to fit into this offense especially moving towards a, a tough test in Toronto and their, their front four is very dangerous. So how do you see Don Jackson kind of playing a role there? You know, I was a bit concerned about the schemes that were used up front to get Jackson the running room that he needed, you know, with Jackson as a downhill type runner, uh, a guy that's going to plant the foot and go North and South, you need to zone block that front and get double team movement at the point of attack to give him the opportunity to press that hole and get upfield. Once he's into that second level and, and you hope that your lineman is, is going to come off and block uh, the second level linebacker, but once he's into that second level, he's very difficult to bring down. So, you know, I, I really think you can't win a playoff ball game without a running game. And, and I think you have to be able to run the football even if you don't make a lot of yards early, late in the ball game, it's going to pay dividends. And this weekend may be a bad weather game uh, in Toronto, and it's going to be, become doubly important that you have some sort of a running game in an inside tackle to tackle runner. How much of an impact is is grass versus turf, especially in uh, in these weather games? Like. Do, are, do you think because do you think the running game is even more it, 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 important because of a, the grass field versus the turf? Like, I, how much do you think the grass is going to be a factor, especially if it is a poor weather game, like you said? Well, you know, I really I, I almost dismiss the the surface uh, once you're into the ball game, but at the same time, you have to have the right foot where the cleats are very very important. That becomes Drew's. Uh, uh, job to do. You know, he understands what the turf is like in Toronto. So he wants to outfit his team with the right cleats. Uh, you know, we don't have to put spikes on them, but we have to make sure that, that number one, you have the right cleat level and two, that you clean those cleats. If, if you're using the old stud type cleats that you clean those every time you get a timeout to give the, uh, the best footing available. I uh, mentioned the Ticats uh, have a closed practice today, so no media allowed in attendance. What would you be hoping that they'd be working on in a closed practice? What, what, what is the importance of a closed practice to, to, keep, to keep spying eyes out? Well, I really think it, it, uh, it's a concentration factor. The, the coaches and team want to concentrate on what they're doing. It's not so much that it's different. It's that they, they want to have it in a position where total concentration is on what's happening. Now, that's not to say it doesn't happen every day in practice, but we know it doesn't. It, you know, there are wandering eyes and whatever uh, in practice. But it's not so much that you're going to put something new in. You've been practicing some things that you may have put in way back in, in the time previous uh, that you want to be able to throw at Toronto to give them a little more uh, uh, things to think about on the defensive side especially? Or is the defense scheming up some kind of a new blitz that they haven't used, but they've practiced all along? So this, this closed practice gives them the opportunity uh, to bring that forward. Uh, what can you take, how much can you take from the four previous times you've played the Argos? It's not too often. Coach O had mentioned it. He doesn't think he's ever played five t a team five times in a season. That's including playoffs and preseason. So, so what can you take from those four previous matchups? You know who this team is. You probably know them better than anybody. Yeah, you know what you've got to do. Now it's a matter of putting the, the game plan in. And that's part of the close practice also, the game plan that you're going to use. You practice against your practice team uh, with your offense uh, the way you want to go against Toronto and uh, vice versa on the defensive side. But really, all the stats don't mean anything. Uh, the X's and O's, it's not the X's and O's. It's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. 
that make the difference in a ball game. In in the players themselves, and I said this last week, when you're in the playoffs, it's a player's game. It's not a coach's game. And the players have to take the responsibility to get the job done. All right, looking at this Argos team, they finished first in the East Division thanks to uh, three wins against the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They've had a lot of time off. Some guys, 26 days in between snaps. Uh, What are you expecting to see from this Toronto Argonauts group against uh, a a motivated Ticats group coming off a big win last week? I would say we got them right where we want them. You know, we're we're in a position, Hamilton is, uh, to really – uh, you go back to 1986 when we had the, the two-point or, or total point playoff. And Toronto came into Hamilton and handled us very easily. Then we went over to Toronto and took it away from them. And I think the same thing is going to happen this week, that Hamilton will go in there with, with a very fierce defensive structure and a good offensive structure, and they will take Toronto to task. And, and just bust their bubble one more time. Uh, that being said, the the Argos do have weapons. Uh, you know, McLeod Bethel Thompson is has proven to be a, a competent quarterback. Eric Rogers is a is a pretty decent receiver. Their front four has been pretty dangerous. Is there a point of emphasis you think the Ty Cats have to be focused on this week against the Argos yeah. in preparation? Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, Thompson is a pocket thrower. He wants to throw from the pocket. He's a big guy who who can stand tall in the pocket. He will take the underneath throws all day if you give it to him. He'll take the check downs. But if you go man on him, he's going to go up top. And you mentioned Rodgers as as one of those guys who can get down the field and get the deep ball. So I really think defensively what you want to do is you want to move Thompson off that spot. By that, I mean you've got to rush him and make him move his feet right or left. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. I would prefer you move him uh, to his left, the defensive right, because that makes it a more difficult throw. But I think the the point of emphasis is you've got to pass rush him. You're not so worried about him running the ball as you are about getting the ball out quick. And when you get the ball out quick, there's only two ways you can handle it, and that is if you can't get the rush, you've got to get your hands up and, and disrupt the throwing lanes uh, that he's looking for. And last time these two teams played, the Ticats looked to have a game plan where they, they tried to go deep early, and they did try to go deep early. A couple of missed throws, a couple of drops, and, and it just wasn't clicking. Do you, do you foresee the Ticats going with a similar game plan? Do you think the Argos are expecting that? Like – how different do you think their game plan will be than that last time out? Well, I can't guess as to what their game plan might be, but I would say they had the players open on those deep routes. There's no reason to uh, think they can't do that again. I, I really think that that uh, in this type of a ball game, I'm going to go with the experienced quarterback, Jeremiah, and allow him the opportunity to take those deep shots down the field. Now, I don't know if Addison's coming on the roster this week, but if he does, that adds one more dimension uh, as speed down the field. So, you know, you've, you've got White, you've got Banks, you've got Acklin, you've got Addison, you've got to use those guys. And if going deep is, is part of the plan, I love it. I, I think that's the way to stretch them out. And uh, as a coach, how did you prepare, like, playoffs? How did you – change did you change anything from regular season to playoffs with your positional group in the room with the coaches what was different about playoffs there really is is no change in what you want in your demeanor you want to be honest with the players that you have and you want to go with the things you've worked on all year long and and you don't want to go into the room and say okay now it's all different now we've got to do this the players know what they have to do. And they're looking to their coach to be the calming effect and say, okay, here's the, here's the run plays. Here's the pass plays. Here's the protection schemes. You guys work it out and get the job done. It's 90% want to and 10% technique. Uh, coach, you seem confident for Sunday for the Ticats. You got to be confident. This is, a, this is the, the open door to the Grey Cup. 
This is the way you, you've worked all year to get to. And, and so, yes, I'm confident that they'll do a good job. I love it. I'm going to take that confidence with me the rest of the week. Coach Sal, appreciate this as always. Thank you, sir. You're more than welcome, Louie. My thanks to Coach Sal for joining me today, and my thanks to you. Appreciate it as always. We are back tomorrow, same time, same place, as uh, we are allowed back inside the practice field. We'll have all your news and notes from practice. And remember, a special bonus episode coming on Saturday from Walkthrough Day. And then, of course, the game on Sunday. We have extended coverage starting at 1030 It'll be Courtney and Bubba O'Neill. Andy Fantuz and I will get you set with Tiger Cats pregame beginning at 11.30. And keep this in mind, it is a 12.30 kickoff. And this isn't just some, hey, you know, 12.30, they want to get us in our seats. It is a 12.30 kickoff. If you show up for 1 o'clock, you'll probably be in the second quarter. Uh, So just want to make sure you know that. I know a couple of people have said 1 o'clock. I've tried my best not to, but it is a 12.30 kickoff from BMO Field. Just reminding you that, and it's a 12.30 kickoff with RJ and Luke Tasker, and Andy and I will get you set at 11.30. But before that, we're back tomorrow, same time, same place, for the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis B. Hoping you have a great day. Tie Cats today with Louis B. Subscribe, like, and get your Tie Cats fix every weekday.